Hello and welcome to this British Library event, Notes on the Great Work of Meeting Yourself with Yes Daily Ward. My name's Maxime and I'm a live screening producer at the British Library. In this event, we'll be delving into Yers' latest book, The How, a beautiful mix of poetry and heartfelt advice. And we are thrilled tonight to be joined by Nikita Gill, who is quite possibly one of Yers' biggest admirers. Nikita is a British Indian poet and has written and curated many volumes of poetry, including Your Soul is a River, Wild Embers, Poets, Poems of Rebellion, Fire and Beauty, Fierce Fairy Tales and Other Stories to Stir Your Soul, Great Goddesses, Life Lessons from Myths and Monsters, Your Heart is the Sea, and The Girl and the Goddess. She has been described as one of the most successful Insta poets, sharing her work on social media to over 600,000 followers. Her collection Slam was shortlisted for the Clipper 2021. A few notes on housekeeping before we begin. During the event, you may post your questions in the form just below the video. On the webpage, you can also find links to buy Yers' book and give feedback or make a donation to the British Library. This event has speech to text captioning. To activate the captions, just press the button within the player video. A huge thank you to you all for joining us tonight and an even bigger thanks to everyone from the Living Knowledge Network, our partnership of national and public libraries. I really hope you enjoy the event. Over to you, Nikita. Thank you very much, Maxine. Um, I am absolutely delighted today to be talking to Yessa Daly Ward, who is an English writer, model, and actor. She is known for her debut poetry collection, Bone, as well as her spoken word poetry, which has always blown my mind. Her memoir, The Terrible, was published in 2018, and in 2019, it won the Penn Ackerley Prize. She also co-wrote Black is King, Beyonce's musical film and visual album, because she's awesome. She's also given TED Talks and has changed the world for the better with the COP26 World Leaders Summit. So to briefly introduce the how, which has been so spiritually changing for me, the How Notes on the Great Work of Meeting Yourself is a splendid collection of essays, verse, and wisdom that helps us as readers to connect with our real selves, not the selves that we have grafted in response to our surroundings or the ones we have created to appease others, but instead our most intimate self, the one we visit in dreams, the one that calls to us from a glimmering future. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for being here. And can I just say what a privilege it is to do this with you? <laughs> Hello, it's such a, I'm so, so, so happy that it's you that I'm speaking to today. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. This is amazing. Yeah, I'm so delighted, truly. Um, and can I just like go right into this? Because I just, I just, this actually really did just blow my mind. Um, you read out the, you, you performed the most beautiful poem at COP26 at the World Leaders Summit. And you opened for David Attenborough. And I would love to know more about that. I've watched that video so many times. So I would love to know more about that poem, the process, and how you ended up doing that. Well, they approached me. Thank you. Good question. They approached me and um, asked me to, uh, they wanted the poem commissioned. And I, it was very, very, very close to the event, actually, which is actually the way I like to work, funnily enough. I don't like to have days and days and days and days. I just like to have this short amount of time to really turn something over in my head. And what is more, what's a, what's a more pressing thing and, and a more important thing to discuss than the future of, of the climate, of this, 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 this place that we, we have the privilege to to belong to and so it wasn't it i didn't have to reach very far for that that poem you know and i didn't have to reach very far for the lines it's it, it's i'm strange but you'll know this when something means something to you it's like it's like the lines are already there and you just have to pick them out of yourself so so that talking about you know the the hour is is now and this is the time that we we have to decide what we're gonna do and addressing it to world leaders, the people in whose in whose hands this this 
this falls, the people who can do the most, it, it seemed really pertinent. So it was a pleasure to do. And yeah, I was honored to be asked to do that. No, you, you, you blew everyone away. I think there were so many of my friends who came up to me and said, have you seen this beautiful spoken word poem? And I'm like, hi, biggest fan. Of course I've seen it. <laughs> I don't miss, I don't miss a thing she, she does. Like I'm just saying. Um, so I just want to get into in, because I think the how ties in very nicely because you talk so much about nature in the how mm -hmm. um, and it ties so well into your uh, into the COP26 poem that you did. But, you know, from the formation of your poetry collection, Bone, to the beautifully written memoir, this, the terrible to the how, you've always created this really stunning genre defying work. And I was wondering if you could like talk a little bit about your path, you know, as a writer, because there's been a lot of evolution in your work. Um, so I, I'd love, love to hear more about that. Yeah, I think it, I don't, I, first of all, I'm easily bored. <laughs> and secondly, I don't like to stick to one thing, you know, so much that we, I mean, everything that is human is an amalgamation of things, isn't it? You know, so, you know, when we're, when we're writing, there's, there's stuff that, that leans towards the horror and then leads, leans towards the love and leans towards the poetic and then, you know, you might throw something in there that feels more like prose. And it's always, a, it's, it's nothing that I set out to do, but it appeals to me um, deeply. I love poetry and prose. And even when I'm writing longer pieces like fiction, there's, there's a poetic energy that's never going to leave me. And also the other reason why it's so genreless, I think, is because I, I don't really know what I'm doing when I start writing a book. So I just you know it comes out and then i might think oh i like this part written like in the terrible a lot of it is written in this sort of prose section and then it will be like in the third person then it's in the second person you know and i don't want to commit to one so if you can tell it five ways mm -hmm. then i don't see why not i mean also if if it just felt right to just continue then that's what i would do but there are so many different moods and you know little twists that that sort of that, that find their way to me when i'm writing so i just go with it i just go with it and let it let it let it flow and that's why i think it's genre less because it you know it becomes its own thing it's like water and i think that's what makes you such a powerful writer though for for me like as soon as i start reading your work um i'm just it's just it i get drawn in and i just get locked inside your thoughts and it's very hard then to put the book away so I have to finish it I, I was very I was very lucky that I got like you know four or five hours with the how because I, I couldn't put it down I just couldn't put it down because I was like my god it's like she's speaking directly to me and I think you hear that a lot from people on your social media and stuff I think people say that a lot to you it's like it's like you wrote this for me you wrote this specifically for me um, but I think that's exactly the same with your work as well. You sort of take this this moment in in time, and because because of your honesty and because you are, it, it, it's raw. And what I feel like when you're honest, of course, people people see it and it speaks to them because we're all experiencing the same things um, yeah. relatively. So I get that as well from your work. This sense of oh my god, and it's always a sense of I needed to read this at this time in my life because these are you very you i mean spoken very elegantly and and written very elegantly uh but these are very universal themes that that you deal with and i deal with so it's like oh i love it i love it i love how much of a a bridge of connection that that using words just gives you especially if you're like an introvert or something which i am so this is my space to like really like go out into the world and, and tell the truth in ways that I might not have without sort of being, being able to write. And I think you do that like with the how, first of all, like I was about to burst into tears when you said such lovely things about my work. So thank you. <laughs> I didn't even know that you knew who I was basically. I was just like the, some, Absolutely. some fangirl, you know, like just there. Um, so that means a lot to me. So thank you. Um, but then I, 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 it's one of the things that I have noticed in the how um, you, you have such uh, and it does come from being introverted. So I'm an introverted ex, ex no, I'm an extroverted introvert is what I've been told. So I, I can do both. 
where I can, you know, have that social battery a little bit. And then like, I have to close off and then I'm just observing everyone from the outside. And I think you do that so well in the how, because you do this thing where you you're in, you're in the moment and you can see how someone is being, is perceiving their surroundings and reacting to them. So much of the book is about that is like how much of ourselves we built out of reacting to our surroundings. Mm. And then you come out and you pull that lens back and you go, and here's how we stop doing that. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, I haven't heard anyone say that before, <laughs> but that's that's such a, a beautiful way of of describing it. That it's yeah, that it's it, it is that it is the lens change and what happens then and and how we relate to ourselves outside of ourselves via everybody else. Like there's so many different um, yeah, camera angles if you if you if you want, you know, and it's it's really interesting what we have just, you know, the, in terms of propriety and what we're supposed to do and say and think and 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 those concerns, those deep concerns about how how we will be perceived. I mean they get in the way of everything. Uh, and it was really just sitting there during a pandemic with nowhere to go in my apartment when all of this stuff, so a lot of this stuff just, just came out. It was like, well, okay, what do I do if I don't have anyone to impress or, you know, what do I look at like Instagram? Like, what, <laughs> what am I going to do? You know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it came to me because of those, those, those sort of meditations. Mm. And they come across so beautifully in the book. In fact, can I bother you to do us to do a reading so everyone gets yes. a flavor? Yes, yes, yes. And was it the one? Oh wait, was it the one that is talking about you were more than? Yes, uh, okay. I think it's like page thirty-one. Thirty-one. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Got yes. it. All the block capitals. Okay. You are more than your body your fears, your productivity, your years on the planet, the figures in your bank, what they call achievements, the things you have finished, the things you have not finished, what you can see, what you were talking about, what you were saying about yourself, what is said about you, where you are, your plans, how much you eat or did not eat, how much you drink or do not drink, the place where you learned, who you slept with or did not sleep with, what they call your looks, your hunger, your sex drive, the books you have read, where you have been or have not been, your physical strength, where you are right now, what they call success, what you spend or do not spend, who and what you love. Is there something really special about reading, uh, listening to your voice, read out your work? I actually have the audiobook of the how as well, because I do this thing where I go into full immersion mode, where I need to have the audiobook and the book in front of me to really sense. I do that too. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You create a tunnel of like the the author's like voice and le the le seeing the letters. I love that as well. It's really special, isn't it? Like when you really get that consumed with a piece of work um, and, and especially when it's such a nourishing piece of work, like the how. Um, and I think like that, I was just going to say, like it particularly struck me, like how in the how that you were, you wrote about gratitude thinking and journaling. And what I liked was that you spoke really authentically about it because you were like, you know, at first, um, even I was like, what the hell is this kind of thing, yeah. you know? like the idea yeah. of God, because I think a lot of people talk about it, but in that very kind of preachy way, but yeah. you, you went into it going, I, I was like very skeptical on this. And then you talked about why. And I thought that that was such a great way of getting someone into the idea of gratitude, you know? Um, so can, can I, can I ask more about how the practice oh. changed your life? Is it Oh my God, the pr these practices, I have to live my life by them now. And the reason why I talk about them in that way as well is because even with the skepticism, it doesn't go away. There are days when I'm like, oh, you know, gratitude. Like, how can I be full of gratitude when this is like, not, you know, I'm not going to swear, but you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I, you have to constantly, I talk about it in the book, 
you forget and remember and forget and remember and forget and remember that things work. And I think the cycle is important. Like, I mean, it's not about getting straight A's and A stars and every day going, I'm so grateful for this and this and this when the, you know, your life is like in flames around you. No, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's tough. But what I find that these things help is that when you start to stack habits and you start to stack these things that you know work, then on the days when you feel shakier, you don't have to lean into motivation like this because the, the habits are there. So you just you just tick them off. Even when you feel like crap, you know, you just do them. And 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 certainly sometimes you don't get to do it every day and that's fine. But I do notice the positive correlation when I pay attention to things like gratitude. And they have to be real things, you know, it has yeah. to be something tangible that I can see, you know. It has to be something I find beautiful. It can't be I can't just be running it off. But it's really important because when I am feeling depressed or, you know, the anxiety starts to have an edge to it, there are definitely things I can hook into that are, that are made that are rewire me in in a in a way and help me to just if if only for five minutes just mm -hmm. connect with something else, just shift my vibration a bit because it's it's just those small incremental vibrational shifts that matter. I'm not trying to yeah. like turn a terrible mood into a great mood. I mean, no, it's little steps. So yeah, I lean hard into my practices, especially now, it's winter. <laughs> so yeah, I, I double down on that. I think like I, what you just said about anxiety um, and like having these practices, because that's what they say for anxiety, isn't it? Like you put in um, patterns or, or, or instruments almost like you create a bunch of instruments, which for, for, for me, reading the how, what the practices that you talk about, in a way, the how is almost like a workbook. Like yes. it's a workbook of, of meditations and how to meditate and how to put these things into place because I was reading it and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this today. And like, it's something that you've spoken about so concretely, but at the same time, because I was reading Sappho's fragments, like those, those cap capital letters bits really feel like fragments, like yeah. Sappho's fragments. Yeah. There's something very ancient about them as well as modern. And I love that. It, yeah, it reminded me of something Roman when I was writing it. For, for a start, when I was writing it, I was I was fragmented because I was sitting there in the middle of the pandemic just thinking, oh my God, like, what, what? And then it was that time when they were saying, oh, maybe in a month, you know, everything all, we had, we didn't realise like the, the breadth of time that this was going to occupy. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just that the false sort of like promises from the government and everything like that. And yeah, I was just, everything was very fragmented. So it, it, it came out exactly, I mean, this is this is my brain at the time. And it's a beautiful brain because, <laughs> wow. Um, uh, because yeah, I, I've uh, recently gone through a period, well, I've st I'm starting a period of grief actually, because I lost someone this morning. And um, th this book, because I reread it, I reread it after, and it said something completely different to me mm. on that reread after this experience of of losing someone quite suddenly to a painful, like it's it's such a painful experience, and yeah. reading a book prior to that from a, in a stable state of mind, and then reading the how, um, when you are going through that grief and there's that slight instability inside you. There's something so soothing, especially listening to your voice. Um, and I, I feel like that's one of the things that your work has done for me repeatedly it, it, with bone, as well as with the terrible and with the how um, is that it, it's given me a safe space for my grief because grief makes you feel so unmoored, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. And you talk about grief in a, in a way, which is like, you know, people tend to shy away from grief or walk away from it or like they mention it, but they don't go into the depths of it. Like you go into the depths of it. You're like, here, here's the discomfort, sit with it. Here's the pain, sit with it. You've done it like repeatedly over the course of your work, but with the how you show us how to sit with it, which is why I think it's the, the title of the book is amazing because you keep coming back to that. Um, and I'd like to talk to you about that, if you're comfortable, about your relationship with grief, because you talk about it so beautifully. You know. Yeah, I mean, um, first of all, sorry for your loss. It, it, it's, it's such, uh, it's, 
it is such um, a time of surprises and mm. and and it's such a leveling time i.e leveling so mm. level like knocking you out and, and also leveling you know there's also a deep sense of, of like like it's a it's a it's a very very dull calm that comes with it as well as all, all the all the stress that it brings up as well it's like it's so, it's so many sided and that's that's why i mean i guess you, you were right all three of the books deal with grief mm. i mean life is a long grief <laughs> it is uh it's beautiful but it's also it's that it's an exhale it's it's a lot of it's it's a lot of stuff rolled into one and in a way and we grieve in tiny tiny ways i think most mm -hmm. days but some we're so used to and so so we've just become like so desensitized to some things that are so deeply wounding that we just roll with the punches and then there's grief there's grief um that that happens and just knocks you off your feet and you're like what is this um i do like to talk about it because one of the things I notice when, like, especially with like the loss of of parents, is that people you don't you don't get prepared no. for these things, and we don't learn about it in school, which is wild to me that we learn other things, and 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 when I say learn about it, yes, like the pain, and yes, the the inevitability, we kind of sweep it under. I don't know if that's because we're both sort of brought up in England. <laughs> and it, it's maybe in other like cultural cultures or countries it's different but we don't get those tools but i'm also talking about as simple as knowing what to do when it happens um knowing what to do practically and what or what what it's like to be left with that and left with the responsibility especially at certain ages and and nothing prepares you so i do like to talk about it because i, I I naturally lean towards talking about the things that we don't talk about so much, but I think it should be on curriculums. I really do, because it affects everybody. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. I hundred, especially in the, the the two years that we've had, our relationship globally with grief has changed so deeply because yeah. everyone knows everyone who was affected or passed away, or they couldn't say goodbye to, or. Um, and collectively, what does that do to us as a global community, right? Like, what does that do if we don't know how to process our grief, if we're not taught how to do that? Because I find that online, we're going to go into, like, my favorite subject, social media. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, but online, I find there's a lot of hurt people. A lot of, a lot of hurt pe people are carrying a lot, and they haven't been taught to process it. And then they'll come to say your page or my page and they'll see us talking about something like mourning or grief or pain and they'll just they feel either they feel like they they they, they lash out at us for talking about these things or they they trauma dump and they tell you this the, the entire like yeah. you know this and and they risk triggering not only you but other people who read that um and it all comes down to what you just said it's like we haven't been taught how to process grief in a healthy way so we do these very unhealthy things. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot there, isn't there? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I think that's that's so right that if we're not taught how what to do with the, this emotion, and it can come out. I mean, it can be a lot of transference. It can come out like anger at the person who's expressing it, like oh, you know, this, that, and the other, because you're you're there with all of this stuff that you don't know what to do what to do with. And then, as you said, the other thing where there's like, I don't want to say overshare because I think sharing is, yeah, people share because they, they, they need to, they have it on yeah. their chest. But if there were ways, if there were mm -hmm. ways that more ways, more places for people to go, then it wouldn't build up in that way. So I Absolutely. do also understand when, when people like in my DMs sometimes I'm like, oh my God, this person just told me all of this. But I, I understand it because I'm like, well, maybe that's the only I'm the only person that's told and there isn't space where they live or maybe it's just not the dumb thing to, to talk about it it's mm. it's it's wild I think we need new ways uh, of, of expressing ourselves especially when it comes to these very common universal themes 
by death is mm. universal as having the baby is universal mm. as getting married or mm. grief death love um pain like falling in love and then breaking up with some all of these things oh. are very universal but also it's really interesting to me what you just said right now because i think that's a really good way to look at it um, when someone DMs you and they they give you like this the whole kind of like story of this very traumatic thing, which is mm. trauma dumping, but like like you, I feel a responsibility to that person because I'm like, who else? It all comes down to the fact that therapy is inaccessible. You know how in, on on Twitter people do this thing uh, where they go, just get therapy, just get therapy, as if it's that easy. Yeah, yeah, as if it's easy. I mean, in and there's the there's so many aspects. I mean, there's there's financial, but there's so many other like like mm -hmm. obstructions to somebody getting therapy that people won't think about. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's access. There's whether that person is allowed to go and do it. There's it, it, there's there's all of those things. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 interesting, and it's and also interesting. We talk about it in the how as well. How we expect everybody to to sort of get the same knowledge at the same time of different things and different world issues and and different mm -hmm. groups of people no that that it can't be the case it just can't mm -hmm. be the case so mm -hmm. it's yeah i find it, it the the thing i'm sure we're going to get into social media but that's why i find really interesting about social media this sort of shaming of of people who 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 believe a different thing and i'm not talking about the the hugeisms but i'm talking mm -hmm. about like like smaller things that happen that, that are just so unfair yeah, yeah yeah i mean someone makes a mistake a genuine honest mistake and suddenly there's a massive pile on on them and they'll apologize and that apology isn't good enough and then they'll apologize again and that apology like people just won't let it go and it's just like you know it, people act as if there's this moral purity in them which is almost godlike you know right. and and yeah, I, I, yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, you were going to say. I think it's again people not having a place to put their pain. So this all gets transferred on this other situation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It it's really interesting because I find the how really compassionate about that. Um, you know, where you talk about you say this in the book where you're like, you know, the global community is moving forward, and if you don't fit in with exactly the exact knowledge that they have at the time, you're cancelled you're out you're you know forgotten you're not a part of that community anymore you can't do that to people people are always looking for a place to belong right yeah, and that's yeah. what you say in the book yeah and everyone doesn't learn at the same time or at the same pace so it's it's not something to expect definitely it's we we should educate ourselves and that that's a responsibility that's a personal responsibility mm -hmm. um and we we, sh we we shouldn't look to harm others um, but we there's also we need compassion. Mm. We need compassion, I think. Yeah. A lot of compassion. I think um that's part of the problem that we're facing today is that the there's this idea, you touch upon it in the how as well. There's this um there are these very archaic ideas about strength, you know, so that coldness is strength and like um you know, not reacting um, when someone is, is is someone is hurting you and you don't react, that's strength and like mm -hmm. um it's very archaic ideas. Um, some of them are based in religion, I think, but Definitely. like and culture mm. and different like cultural groups and what's expected of them and what it means for, for them to be strong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's, mm. It's, it's really it's really like this is I think why your work is so empowering to a lot of people because there is that compassion there, you know, that compassion that I feel is slowly going missing and social media is a culprit in that but we're going to get into that uh you know <laughs> you and i both have like these uh big instagram followings and big social media followings and i don't i feel quite like i love the way you use your social media because there was this whole you you do this thing where you show people when you're writing um mm. And I love that. I love that because it's it's giving people a view into your process, which I think is such an intimate thing. And you're welcoming people into that. Um, and I thought that was something so special. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that, you know, the idea of like welcoming people, showing them as you write. You know, what, what I think the key is, I think I was saying to this to you before that 
I once the the work, even the process of it, once it meets the air, mm. it it becomes it's for the reader. So yes, I've, I've written it like I've shaped it. I didn't invent language. I, I'm just shaping it, like mm. I'm shaping it, and then I put it out there. And and so I don't over identify with what comes out there, which is why I can show my work, like I can you know write my newsletter with with um, typos in it, or I can show, oh, I changed that phrase because it wasn't strong enough. I really don't have that thing that's like, oh my god, it has to be perfect. Mm. I I I don't, I just don't subscribe to it because a, it just wastes time. Mm. I have this sense of urgency built in my being, and it comes from like parents dying early, it comes from hustling, it comes from desperate situations, it comes from growing up, with, it comes from poverty, it comes from everything. I want to do things, I want to do things now. And not to say that I don't want a great, good piece of work to be out there, I care about the work and, and there is some conscientiousness in, in that, but it, it's not overly done. I always think, put the poem out because there'll be, if I want to say something slightly different, there's another poem for that. So I put it out. I put it out because I'm not promised tomorrow. You know, I'm not. So and I and I, you know, it's, it might be a bit of anxiety, but I, I have that thing in me that's like at now, and I have it for a lot of areas in my life. Like I'm, you know, <laughs> I like it. I'm like a, a, a fire burning. So I'm like, shh, shh, shh. right. What am I doing tomorrow? Um, yeah, I find that I find that's just the way I am and the way I work. So I think showing the the workings of that. I just found it just it doesn't feel like a big departure from from how I feel about about, about anything really. Yeah, yeah. I think I think but I found that special specifically because you I I found it unusual but also like it's such a breath of fresh air because um I I talk to I talk to writers who tell me things like ah oh, you know um, it's kind of like a it's an underhanded compliment when they say this to me uh, but they're like <laughs> oh you know, you you wrote a poem and you just put it out there yeah I think that's really brave and I'm just like <laughs> I'm like it's it's I, I I felt something which was very like you know sometimes it's about a school shooting and something I've felt something really powerful yeah. at that time and I know people use my as they use your comment sections to to talk about these things yeah. and that's a safe space for that yeah. and when I put that work out there, it's feeding a very different, like I'm not trying to be lit. I'm not trying to be literary. I'm trying to, to make space for something. And I think you do that. You make space for something with space. your work. And these are just raindrops, you know, we, there's, there's, there's a, there's a steady, um, a steady stream of water, mm. you know, we're, we're not in lack. So mm. I'm happy to let that, let that come out. And yeah, also not trying to be literary. I love yeah. books. I, I eat, sleep, breathe, reading. I love it. I'm, I'm a better reader than writer, I think. But um, yeah, there's, there's always time and space for the next thing. I don't, I don't hold myself up to any like, like high, high literary ideals. You know, I just want to do the work and be honest, and that's it. I don't, I don't really want to let anything get in the way of that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, and. It's so clear, like your books are such a different medium than your social media, then you treat everything that you do, the mediums that you work in, the platforms you work in, are completely different from each other. You're a different artist in those spaces. You're still you, but you're a different artist in those spaces. Um, and I think that's something really to be admired and to be understood. But unfortunately, um, I, I think about this when it comes to the, the establishment they are determined to define, like to put artists in a box and oh. define them by their platforms. And I think you've, you've had that same thing as I have, where they call you an Insta poet. And it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> well, well, because you publish books, I publish books, you've written for like, you've written for such amazing, um, you know, establishment based literary journals and things like that. And they still call you an insta poet. It's almost like they they credit they're crediting your success to a platform, which isn't true, because right, right, and and actually the book came before, and um, the first book came before. But I think thank you. I I also think there's I don't think that's always innocent. You know, I think mm -hmm. there's a reason um, somebody would want to 
or, or some organizations or maybe types of people would would want to uh, minimize you in that way and it has to be about them it can't be about it can't be about me and i made that decision really early on to kind of i've i've, I've moved inside of that because at first i was like i don't care it can't be what they want it's just a word and then i started to think about it more like two years into it mm. <laughs> two you know three books in and i was like ha huh. yeah. very interesting that that happens I think it would be different, you know, perhaps if I if I wasn't if I didn't present the way I present, you know, if I, if I wasn't a woman, if I wasn't black, you don't know, you don't know, but it's very interesting. And then there's also the very obvious thing that Instagram is the brilliant platform that has carried my work to a lot of places and and and, and yours too and, and we we have that deep gratitude for that. Yeah, um, but also the the work can't be minimised. You know, it exists in paper, on paper, it's in bookshops, and I also don't know why that is a thing to be minimised. Even if we didn't have the books as well, because we're we're using the 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 tools of today, just like any mm -hmm. old mm -hmm. English writer would have been doing if they had they been born now. So it's 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 just deeply interesting to me um, what comes along with this. I do think it's really funny that you mentioned this because I was having a discussion the other day with a, a bunch of my friends because the, the word Instaport really does get under my skin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when people use it um, in a specific way, they know what they're doing. And they, they, they know what they're doing. Um, but I was saying like uh, people are pretending like, you know, Byron and Emily Dickinson and all of they wouldn't be on on social media on twitter and their work fits in. Yeah. Like you're telling me like all of these writers, especially Byron, wouldn't like take full <laughs> advantage of like putting his work on social media and sliding into like the DMs of like young women. You're you're, you're trying to tell me that like that. E. E. Cummings, <laughs> okay. e. e. Cummings would definitely be on like Twitter or like all over it. <laughs> yeah, or have really cool like Instagram squares. Absolutely, with that with that like capital text and oh my god, yeah, beautiful, yeah, yeah. But you're right it's it's of the time it's of the time and people will always want to to minim, minimize i think it's a shame because what happened with poetry is it it started to when it's 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 sort of taught in schools it's just like i mean thankfully i think i'm not at school age obviously hopefully they're doing something new now i really hope so i see that they are studying like poets that are that are modern contemporary do do cool and interesting things but when i was at school it was the very 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 like dry and difficult mm. to access and so i think there's still the idea of poetry for, for people so then when we come along it's like well what's this this mm. is you know <laughs> so that's that's where, where i think some of the difficulty arises and this this idea that relatability and access is a bad thing like that, that, you know, that I've, I've kind of, I, I was in Hamburg um, a few months ago and I was at the literature house and they were wonderful to me. But one of the questions I got asked was, um, you know, do, don't you think like what you're doing is essentially dumbing down, you know, the, the, you're dumbing down your, yeah, that's what I got. I got told that. I got told that. Um, oh. Yeah. 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 And I said, I don't understand that who came up with this idea that to be intellectual, you have to use as many difficult words as possible so that no one understands what you have to say. Like surely access, language belongs to all of us um, and access therefore is probably the best way to show how intellectual and intelligent you are. I think so and there's a way, I mean, few, few um, writers when they're, when they're dealing with the complicated a language or this like lexicon that's really sort of flowery mm -hmm. when that's done when that's done brilliantly it's incredible mm -hmm. and when it's when it's when it's clunky it's it's how 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 can you even see into it oh, and i yeah. think the idea of exclusivity the like the, mm -hmm. that sort of like snobbery is is dangerous because it, it tells some people you can and most people you can't and i mm -hmm. hate anything like that Hundred percent, hundred percent. I just want to ask uh, to remind our audience to please send some questions in to us because I I'm very happy to monopolize all of your time because I think she's brilliant. 
Um, but but you should probably ask her some questions yourself as well. Um, I have like 10 questions that I still have to get through with her. So, uh, so please, please send in your questions so I can ask her. Um, you know, you're, thank you so much for being so gracious um, with all your answers as well. I think I'm learning. This is so nourishing. I'm learning so much and from me. And for me, actually, I love this conversation. <laughs> so can I ask you something? Um, we've touched on it very briefly where we spoke about the gratitude we have to a platform like Instagram, but at the same time, there's that ambivalence. Um, in regards to your work, you give your work out to the world, basically. Mm. Um, there are two there are two schools of thought about this, right? Once, once you've given the work out, it's gone. It, it doesn't belong to you anymore. But on the other hand, it's still our work. Yeah. So what is your relationship to that? Honestly, my it's it's like my relationship to a lot of things. I, I do there's a there's a transience to to objects, to life, to to experiences. So I I just love and respect the work that I've done. And I'm happy I've done it. And I look at the, as I said, I was saying, I look at the books on the shelf sometimes and think, or if I'm in the bookshop and I see my, I'm like, oh, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's, there's a slight like dissonance, but I think it keeps me healthy. Mm-hmm. Like I think it, um, but I think it, yeah, I think I dissociate a little, but I, I don't think that that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I have the utmost respect for where I was when I, when I especially like, bone and this is some years ago now different different person but also the same same soul um and yeah i i i have a lot of love for them but it, it doesn't define me because I'm, I'm like always changing shape uh and 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 that's that that's complete that's how i feel about it i i love that um people when when people are moved by the work and not everyone's going to be moved by the work and that's okay these are offerings mm. and, and yeah I, I i mean i don't know how you feel about that but it's mm-hmm. it's yeah i kind of i leave them here but i still love them as like something yeah. that like i yeah. birthed into the world yeah. they're your children that's how i feel i feel like my work is uh, it's my child yeah. um and and that's you have to let them go off and do their own things right like yeah that's very much how I feel as well you're absolutely right but one of the things this is this is just like a personal thing for me um reviews when you get reviews right and uh I I don't tend to get a lot of reviews in like uh broadsheets or anything like that because people really don't take my work seriously um but you won the Penn Ackerley prize which is a very very wonderful, very literary prize. And you won it for The Terrible, which is a, it's an extraordinary book. It's an extraordinary, beautiful book, uh, which has meant a lot to me. Um, How do you feel when people review your work? Because it's kind of connected to my old question, because like, you know, you give, you give the work out to the world and then then people kind of, sometimes they can decontextualize it and they will interpret it. Like, Mm -hmm. so and that's really interesting when someone puts a new spin on it and you think, oh, oh yeah, I suppose I did, I did, I do do that in the thing. But honestly, I, I'll tell you this, I don't, I don't really engage with it because it's kind of not my job to engage with it. It's after the fact, the book mm-hmm. is out there. Whether they, you know, can't bear the way I've done it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help. Now, I'm not some sort of like, monk who's just all mm. you know benevolent and just like oh if I saw it like pop up on my thing I'd be like tempted to go oh but it's not I don't look for it and especially when a, a new book's out and then there's all of all of that like if I saw like something that was like five stars amazing I'd be like oh I'll read it you know but, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm you know I'm protective of myself because mm. I sit here alone um writing the work and mm. Especially like last year, I spent an obscene amount of time last year alone. You know, mm. it was a pandemic, and I had to look after myself. And mm. and I look after myself first. I do, mm. and that mm. means some. That means sometimes that means not engaging with that or 
or, or saying no to things. It mm. means not not doing too much and not not scraping the bottom of the barrel only to to read a horrible review. I mean, like mm. you know, you if you, if you must come to it and laugh about it later, but you don't you you pick your moments. Yeah. But yeah, I don't engage in 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 reading about myself. Like I know I know myself, and mm. uh, I know the book, mm. so. That's and that's really empowering to hear. That's really empowering to hear because I think uh, a lot of young writers, especially, no one teaches us how to do this, do they? No, no one goes, no one no. comes up to us and says, don't do this, do this, do this. This is how you get published. And these are the right publishers to go to. And this is how you publish. No one teaches us any of that. No one te- No one does, especially when you come up the, the, the sort of self-publishing route as well, when you just kind of do it, do it, just do it yourself. And then yeah it's 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 heavy isn't it yeah it's heavy because you're learning on the job and like no one is telling you are you doing this right or wrong which is very liberating in one way um especially reading your work i can see how it's it's very liberating um because you you are so sure of yourself when you and and that comes across in your work the how specifically for me i feel was so soothing um, because you were so sure of what you were saying, and I say saying because I was listening to it in the audiobook and reading it, um, and it just made it just there's a whole world being built around me with your language, which is so, um, so beautiful and so powerful. And you're giving people a lot with your work. Thank you. Do you think about that? Do you, do you, do people ever come up to you like constantly? This must happen to you all the time, where people I said this to you just before we did this. Your work means so much to me. Oh my God. Like, you know, you've changed, you know, it's like you are writing for me, specifically for me. It's like you craft your work specifically for me. And it's, it, well, it's beautiful to, it's beautiful to just, I feel lucky because it's, it's beautiful to have the chance to take anything that's happened. And, you know, we've all had a whole lot happen. And, and be able to alchemize it into something that can be useful. I mean, for God's sake, there has to be a reason we've gone through some of these things, right? There's always a reason. It's not, as it says in there, like no experience is useless, not not one. So it's, yeah, it's, it shows me that the the filtration system or whatever we're, whatever terrible euphemism I'm going to use is, is, is working. You know, it's, it's something is changing and then I'm able to put something out. Definitely. 100%. Can I ask you like, just a, because you mentioned reading a lot, like you love reading. Um, can I ask you who some of your favorite writers are or like who oh, you're reading right oh now? Or... <laughs> I will tell you because I don't, it's, it's hard to have favorite writers because I'm always coming across gorgeous like new gorgeous 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 new like turns of phrase and new new things that I'm working with uh, and I fall into like a writer and then I do this thing which actually I shouldn't do I fall into like this writer and then I start ordering all of their books but then I'm like after the second one I'm like I shouldn't have done that like space it out you know don't try and do everything but it's it's, it's back to that thing that I do I'm like I have to have it all now yeah. um but I, the person that comes to mind, um, only because I'm reading their book right now again, is, is Jean- I'm always talking about Jeanette Winterson because of the way that Jeanette Winterson writes about love and I'm, re- I'm reading um, Written on the Body yet mm. again. And I just love that book. It's a I really powerful book. book. So, I like books that, that, you know, go into the dream world and go into the past and come back and, Go into the present and you know or the not so distant past i, I like that the time travel mm. because we're always time traveling in a way you know we're always you'll sit here and you'll think you'll be thinking about yesterday and you'll think about tomorrow i i find that just really interesting you do that really beautifully in the terrible um this thank going you the, thank you coming, the coming back and forth in the dream world because you, you you had me hooked from that first page where you talk about your brother and you seeing this um seeing a unicorn isn't it like and i'm just like yeah. sitting over there and i was reading it and i was like is this is this a dream did, did they actually see this it's so beautifully written that you don't know and i think that that like slight sense of being a bit unmoored is so powerful for a reader because 
then you go into the rest of the book with that feeling of feeling slightly like your feet have been lifted up the floor. Yeah, yeah, which is a real child childlike thing to experience, but also something. Actually, you've kind of inspired me saying that. I feel like I'm going to write after this conversation, and I don't usually okay. write like in the 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 day when the days it's just, it's three nineteen here, but I'm, I'm never usually writing at this side. I write in the morning, but yeah, there is something about like that heady kind of being children, and then also when like really frightening things are going on and happening and what the, what it feels like to not quite have your feet on the ground and then what that's like as a you know in girlhood or when you you know you start to look like a woman and again your feet not quite being on the ground because of perceptions and people like you know being around so it's it's yeah i i that book that book i didn't expect to write that book but it came out just like the how it wasn't planned at all tell me more about that because that's really interesting to me i would never have written the terrible but i was when uh, bone was was self published and then i had an agent who who's brilliant still the same agent i have and the agent was like do you have anything else and me being a hustler was like yeah i didn't have anything i didn't have i didn't have anything um but I know how to turn things around in a short time. And and so um, I started, I thought it would be a fiction book. I was gonna write this fiction book about a girl and her brother and this unicorn, but it's what happened. So as I'm writing, I'm like, oh, I'm writing more and more of, it's all me, it's not, I'm not, this isn't a fiction book. And then I'm like, oh, am I gonna have to write everything? <sighs> Didn't really think about that, I just did it. If I thought about it, I wouldn't have written it and and yeah and then before you know it, i've got this memoir with things inside it that i would never have told anybody under any circumstances but then when you give it to the book you give it to the book and then you change the world with it that's what you did you put that book out there this book that you um didn't plan on writing and you just changed the world you changed my life with it for sure i mentioned oh, the terrible specifically in the girl and the goddess for this reason and you yeah. because um it really did change my the way that I thought about the world. And it's because you do that slight thing, which isn't quite magical realism, but it sort of is, mm. where you kind of make the reader kind of go, oh, I've been pulled into something different. There's a dream. Wow. And yeah. you do that with the how as well, in a slightly different way. And I'm not saying this because obviously I'm a writer as well, right? So I'm like going into the how going, she's done it here as well, but she's done it in a way of like, that, that thing which I spoke about where you are in the situation and you're talking about being in that consumerist culture and being in all of those things and then going, but if you go a little bit further back and you look at it from here, instead of looking at it from in here, these are the things you might notice. Mm -hmm. And there's something so um, different about the how for that reason. Because there are so many books out there that talk about gratitude writing and things like that. But no one shows you when you're inside it, that anxiety, the, 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 you're scared, you're scared. There's a whole bit that you go, no, 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 in the book. And that, you know, no one sees that in those self, because those self-help books tend to be very like, um, this is what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this book doesn't do that because it's not pretending to be anything other than what it is, which is, you know, you very lyrically and beautifully going, let me show you a different way. Just come, just come with me over here for a little while and I'll show you something a little bit different. And that's really empowering and powerful to read as a reader, I think, and really beautiful. Thank you. I think it's because, um, you know, we're all going through it we're all going through the same thing so when you're inside it of course you can see it and sort of split it apart a little mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i love that i love the how um i loved it specifically today because i really needed it today and i think a lot of people will say that about this book because um it's very hard to write a book which can speak to everyone and i think that's not what you ever intend to do with your books. You don't You don't intend to go there and it's like, I, I'm going to be the voice of every single person yeah. out there. But that's precisely what makes your work so brave. Um, because I think that uh, the bravest books out there don't pretend to be anything other than what they are. Um, 
and I, I've, I've, I've tried writing the, the not brave book, you know, of trying to appeal to everybody. Um, I'm not going to say which one it is, but yeah, I've written that book. <laughs> I, was say, I don't, I was like, I can't think of that. I don't think, I don't, I can't guess that, that book. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I have written that, but like you, you don't, you, you are so, um, I, I would call you a literary talent, like a major literary talent and a major literary talent that also knows how to, you know, do social media very, very well. And who knows how to like create in two different spaces beautifully or three different, four different, because you're so many things, aren't you? You're, you're an actor and you're a writer and you do this stuff for social media, also a model. So you know how to use your, your body like a canvas and like this, this art piece. Um, and how did, yeah, that's one question. How does that all lend itself to each other? Do you find a lot of crossover and all of those things? Well, you, you know, you're one person, you got to make it all work. Like you, you know, um, put very like bluntly. I mean, it's good to have like a few different streams of what you're doing. You know, mm. you can't, rely on one i mean we're not you don't rely on one um one form if if that's not been you as i said like a, a hustler you know mm, not yeah. like hustling people like not like a hustler like a, a gambler but you know somebody who you know i like to to figure out okay this i need to do this and this is how i can support myself doing this because i've been supporting myself for a long time you know since mm. i was a teen, teen so it's like you know, I, if what I what I can what I can do, I I do do, and what I can use, I use, and the we're, we're, it's all one. You know, mm. body as canvas, uh, like body as 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 vessel for like new thoughts, as mm. as as actor, as 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 you know, thing that that moves, as 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 thing um, as as. Um, I guess as instrument to 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 spread the messages as something resonant. It's it's all one. So people might say, "Oh yeah, how you know modeling and how how does how is modeling linked to poetry?" But it does because it's in the one person. So if, the, mm -hmm. if that person's a model and they and they're reciting a poem, it's all one thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And these things are not they're not these separate entities. It's it's you, you're the full person with everything mm -hmm. that you've got. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just you know, some days it's it's one thing, some days it's another, and also stops me from going like I don't want to do the same thing every day. I just don't. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, hundred yeah. percent. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, I illustrate my own books for this reason. I I love I love drawing and painting, but they all they both feed each other. That's what I wanted to know from you, and that does sound like um, all feeds each other. Which we're almost out of time, but I really wanted to know. What you're working on next like purely on a, a, a like a <laughs> i'd like to know i'm writing um i'm playing with something um i'm writing another book and it's fiction yes. um well kind of you know you know me so it's like it's like in and out but it's taking me on quite a wild ride so i'm really really enjoying it i mean the, the very early stages but i'm i'm like tapped into it and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing with my mornings at the moment. That's so exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to read fiction from you because you've done you've done the poetry, you've done the memoir, you've done this beautiful book in the how and you know notes on meeting yourself. And now you're writing fiction. Ah, you're gonna blow my mind. I can't wait. I really can't that's wait. That's what I thought I would only be doing. When I was a kid and I dreamed of being a writer, out, I only thought of fiction. I didn't Im imagine these other um things to come but they came first you know there was a lot to there was a lot to like that had to come out first i think yeah i think you 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 smashed so many like genres though like you you've gone like i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do it really well and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do it well and now you're gonna do it in fiction as well just, yeah i need to I'm be, be out more. there screaming <laughs> I horror i want thriller i want sci-fi i want do you know what i mean why this is a conversation horror so i write horror but under a pseudonym like elsewhere on the internet so we could have a conversation about horror i would love oh. to, i do not know this and i'm very intrigued and i'm gonna find out everything when we get off this because that's incredible <laughs> i did not know that i'm this is really exciting because i feel like we can have like a big conversation women in horror is like a whole thing for me like i've been 
I'm so excited because I think we write such unusual stories, yeah. you know, not the, yeah. not the norm. So I'm really excited to hear that you, you want to write horror because I'm like, yes. Everything, 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 yeah. everything that, you know, brings about a, a feeling, you know, some of life is horror, you know, it's, mm. it's, it's reality. You know, there's a lot of horrific things going on. So yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, yes. I can't believe this conversation's over. <laughs> no, I can't either. I cannot. It went yeah, so I fast. <laughs> it went so fast. I, I want to say thank you so much um, to, for joining me today and for having this really nourishing, very rich conversation um, about craft and, and, and writing. And God, we touched on so much, didn't we? Like yeah. being on social media, being writers, just, you know, the different pre notions about what being a writer is. And I want to thank the British Library for facilitating this conversation. Um, and I'm so, so delighted. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing.